Thank you for everyone for joining us today for the Hack Smarter Not Harder webinar. Today I am joined by John Isaacson, the Principal Consultant at JTI Cybersecurity. Hi John, how are you doing today? Hey Megan, I'm good, how are you? Yeah, thank you so much for joining me. And thank you to everyone who's joining us today across LinkedIn, across uh, Teams on webinar and on YouTube as well. So welcome to everyone for the Hack Smarter, Not Harder webinar. I'm Megan Izzen, I'll be your presenter today. And of course, I'm joined by John Isaacson. So John has a breadth of experience in cybersecurity, second to none, honestly, with 17 years of experience. And I'm so well, I'm so overjoyed to be um, speaking alongside him today, talking about how to hack ethically smarter, not harder, of course, using the KeepNet Labs platform. So today, John, as you know, we're going to be covering three main topics. It's the challenges of social engineering tests for pen testers, of course, how to actually hack smarter, not harder, and how to reduce time it takes to hack smarter, not harder from days to minutes. So a few weeks ago, John and I sat down and we did discuss some of the challenges of pen testers. But John, I'd like to hear from you today. What are your biggest challenges for social engineering tests as a pen tester? Um, so I, the one of the biggest challenges we have, um, you know, like any business, we're trying to scale and build as much automation as possible so that we can kind of multiply our efforts and give our customers better results and give more customers better results. Um, so one of our biggest challenges was the main reason we stumbled across KeepNet, which was that um, we were looking for something that was kind of purpose built and um, made to, you know, automate at least part of these kinds of tests. So there's all kinds of open source tools out there, um, like the uh, Social Engineering Toolkit, um, Z Fisher, Fish Find. I mean, there's there's so many of them um, and we've used them uh over the years and um honestly we've had the best results uh with social engineering campaigns just kind of doing everything manually um and that's okay for you know certainly for for more targeted spear phishing attacks or social engineering engagements against a, a specific department or against a specific person um, but when we're doing a kind of a large scale test against an entire organization and we're kind of trying to you know almost simulate a uh, a focused spear phishing style attack but against you know the whole company um you need you need something scalable and you need automation for that so uh we wanted to look for something uh you know other than um open source tools that we had to stand up and maintain infrastructure and all that ourselves um but the the biggest problem for us is that if you if you go look for uh social engineering or phishing or smishing tools um you know, commercial tools, you're going to find all of the sort of uh, like security awareness training tools. So you're going to find uh, Wiser and Proofpoint and um, Know Before and, you know, I, everybody, everybody, everybody knows who they all are uh, in this industry. But um, the, the problem with those tools and those tools are great if you're the internal IT department. Um, who uh, you know basically needs to put a tool in that syncs with Active Directory or Google gets the entire employee directory, uh, it's whitelisted or it's even you know doing direct mail delivery to Exchange uh, and and sending everybody these simulated phishing scenarios. Um, those tools are great for that. Those tools are not great for pen testers who have to simulate an outsider's perspective. So an outsider is not going to have the IT department that they can call up and say, hey, can you whitelist my IP addresses? And can I put headers in my messages so that you can make sure that they get delivered? Um, so, you know, we, we could do that. And uh, we've certainly had some penetration testing engagements where, um, the customer wanted us to get creative and they said hey like we'll do whatever we have to do to make sure your stuff gets delivered um you know we just kind of want to see what the effect is um but that's not really a realistic perspective that you're giving the customer because they it's a bad guy is not going to have those those kind of you know comforts and conveniences um so keep that was the first platform that we found that could 
meet that use case where you're coming in as an outsider and you're not whitelisted. Um, so you're still going to get, you know, very high chance that you're going to get blocked or spammed or junked. Um, and then even if you get past the filtering, then you've got to deal with the sandboxing and the URL rewrite tools and all that stuff. Um, so KeepNet was the first platform that we found that could um, handle that use case for us. And we were uh, we were really happy to find that it was also super flexible. So they have a lot of built in uh, landing pages and, um, you know, kind of multi step phishing and smishing scenarios. Um, but if for whatever reason, like we couldn't get one of their landing pages past um, proof point URL defense, for example, um, we could stand up our own landing page and host it ourselves and then configure their platform um, so that we could basically, you know, have them blast out the messages, get through the, the, the filtering uh, and then send people to our landing pages and still get reportable um, results that, uh, you know, at the end of the day came out on the other side uh, in a format that we could use to present to the customer. So, um, so it's a, uh, it's a unique, uh, it's a unique solution for that, for that use case. Um, you know, keep, keep that obviously does the, the standard uh, security awareness training type stuff and, you know, the phishing simulation scenarios for the internal IT departments. And um, they're great for that use case too. And I think they're even better than a lot of the other solutions out there, because like I said, they are, you know, very, very, very flexible in the design and configuration of not only the messages themselves, but, you know, landing pages, URLs, you can use custom domains. Um, so, uh, you know, great for that use case, but for us, it's unique. It's something that really doesn't exist out there on the market. So everything else, uh, you know, any any other campaign that we would try to do at scale, we, we would either have to build our own automation or just have a lot of people to do a lot of manual work. Um, so I know I kind of rambled for a bit, but, yeah. you know, in, in short, in short, those are definitely the challenges that, you know, the main challenges for pen testers, which which also are why, you know, like I said, why we uh, why we found you guys. No, it sounds like very common challenges that we're hearing across the board as well. So, you know, before using KeepNet, you're saying you had all these challenges and hopefully now with KeepNet, you don't have as many. So now, John, now you've been using um, KeepNet's platform for a couple of months now. Um, how are you finding, you know, compared to the traditional um, workflows, you know, prior to using us, how do you how do you compare those? Like previously, how long were they taking? How easy is was it? So, uh, so I, I think, I think we talked about this because I went back and looked at like how much time I actually spent working in the KeepNet platform for the first uh, engagement that we that we tried you guys out on, uh, and I think I spent a grand total of uh, six hours and change working in the platform, um, and a lot of and that was me being brand new to the platform. So a lot of that was like figuring out where things were and how things worked, and then basically tweaking things um, to get it, you know, to get the campaigns to run how we uh, how we wanted them to. Um, so uh, once we kind of figured that out, I mean, it's, you know, it's trivial to create and launch the campaigns. Um, so in a in a, an engagement where we might have spent, you know, a week standing up all of the infrastructure and uh, getting our domains set up and getting um, you know some sort of mail delivery platform like SendGrid or MailChimp or something like that set up uh, and uh, you know ba basically configuring all of our automation and and getting the infrastructure stood up um, all of that takes a couple clicks with with KeepNet so you you really only have to focus on what the scenarios are going to be and you know what the what what kinds of social engineering attacks you're going to run against your customers which at the end of the day is is what you're being hired for um mm -hmm. you know and and all of the uh all of the rest of the automation you know is kind of just kind of just there so i mean once we figured out um how we wanted to have everything set up it you know it's a couple clicks to to launch a campaign um the reporting is uh really good um so we have our own, we, we actually have our own reporting platform separate and outside of KeepNet, which is uh, another another vendor of ours that we absolutely love. Um, but uh, but the the reporting, we actually uh, we actually took some snapshots from some of the dashboards um, and the uh, reporting 
uh, from KeepNet because they have a couple of visuals that I think you'll see on the slides later that are just you know really easy to use when you're when you're doing like the high level executive summary. Um, but yeah, overall, super successful. Um, you know, as you guys know, and certainly as the KeepNet support group knows, uh, we definitely ran into some stumbling blocks because we were really pushing uh, we were really pushing the pen test use case to the limit as far as uh, trying to um, trying to break into an organization that had multiple layers of you know email security defenses with uh, you know app basically refusing to work with their IT department um, so that we gave them you know an absolutely true and realistic outside perspective um, you know and there were multiple times where, where, the, where the tech support guys were like well are you sure we can't just you know whitelist something or um but uh every every stumbling block that we ran into um we were able to find a workaround um so the tech support team you know not only was was super helpful but um also creative and you know you can kind of tell that they live eat and breathe hacking also um so uh yeah so it it you know all, all in all, it uh, it worked out into a uh, very successful campaign, um, and that first engagement that we did of you know the the results were great. The customer was was very happy, um, and we uh, we exercised their security program for sure. <laughs> Love to, to hear that. <laughs> I'd love to hear that, you know, the customer support team were so attentive and obviously were able to help you with any issues when you did fall into those. Because, you know, even if you're experiencing tech today, we always would run into problems, but as long as we've got the support there to fix it, all good. Uh, so it really sounds like, you know, prior to using KeepNet, a lot of your challenges were in the complexity of the task, setting up domains and landing pages. But now using KeepNet, it's been a lot more slicker. Would you agree? Yep. Yeah, exactly. we don't we we don't we don't really have to host our own stuff anymore. We just have to decide what we want to put on the landing pages and stick it on there. Exactly. And what does that what does that extra time enable you to do? Does that enable you to do more campaigns for more customers or Yeah, um it it I mean we we can we can always find something to do with any time that we get back, but um it it enables us to um it enables us to to really focus on the areas that need attention. So once we kick the uh, some of the these like big broad stroke campaigns out the door, and we see that there's a particular department or a couple couple particular individuals that could be uh, an issue, um, especially since we have the pen test use case where we're looking to get further. Like we're 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 looking to get well past somebody clicking on a phishing email. We want somebody to click, and then we want to do something with them. Um, so uh, you know, so this gives us more time to actually uh, attempt to exploit and circumvent their security controls. So we're not just testing whether or not somebody's going to click on the link. We can spend time testing what happens when they click on the link. What kind of things can we execute in the customer's environment? How much privilege does the customer have uh, on their machine? You know, is the customer local admin? So whatever they clicked and downloaded and executed, is that going to get us into the rest of the organization? That kind of stuff. Um, we can, you know, we can we can focus on finding where all of the all of the risk is past the past the human. Um, so which which ultimately gives the customer uh, a better result. So, you know, instead of just saying to them and saying, hey, we did a phishing campaign, we did 50,000 uh, social engineering activities between phishing and smishing and vishing and you know 50% of your people clicked on links so send them all to training um, we can give them that and then we can say and by the way they clicked on links uh, we crafted some interesting landing pages we captured their credentials and we got something you know past Sentinel one, and we got something past proof point. And by the way, you should make these configuration changes to prevent that from happening in the future. So, um, a lot of added value that we can provide to the client with, you know, time that we're not spending uh, automating the the phishing campaigns. Indeed. And when we've spoken previously as well, you've mentioned about how the reporting analysis actually takes quite a lot of time. How does the reporting analysis that KeepNet provides enable you to create your reports faster, if it does? Um, yeah, so so reporting on social engineering is particularly challenging. I mean, reporting for pen testing in general is is pretty challenging, and there are definitely great tools out there, um, you know, that can help uh, 
sort of take your um, results from all your different tooling and log sources and things and consolidate them into useful findings. Um, but it's a lot harder to do that with social engineering because it's not like you have it's not like you have an action log uh, like you would for like a network penetration test. So you certainly know like uh, how many emails you sent, how many text messages you sent, how many people did this and that and the other thing. Um, but you still have to tell the story on what you did, why you did it, why you targeted the people that you did, why a bad guy would target those people, you know, why they look like a soft target. Um, because those are the kind of little, you know, nuance and, and fine details that the customer needs to understand so that they can counter, um, you know, a bad actor that's going to be looking for those things. Um, so you're always going to have to write that story. And the KeepNet, uh, the KeepNet platform basically eliminated all of the other stuff that we would have had to do in social engineering reporting so that the time that it took, I mean, it, you know, we, we won't, I, I suppose we could use chat GPT and just let it write the story for us. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, we still had to write the story, but that's all we had to do. So we didn't have to sit there and go to a million different places to figure out, um, you know, how many people we hit with phishing versus vishing versus, uh, smishing and, uh, you know, what the results were, who clicked on what, um, all of that is, uh, is readily available and, you know, there's good visuals. So like I said, like in a lot of cases, we didn't even take the raw data um, and put it in our reporting system. We just took like some of the visuals and screenshotted them. Um, so that was really nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, all the reporting can be exported to CSV. So it's also easy to parse if you do want to take it into a, into a reporting platform and, um, you know, automate or transform some of the results to, to generate findings. So, um, you know, all in all, it, it, uh, I guess, long story short, to summarize, I know I started rambling again. Um, I get excited about this stuff. But uh, it, it, uh, it it basically, you know, it, it automates all of the reporting except for writing the story. So we could focus on writing the story, which is the, you know, ultimately the important part. And generally, the, uh, the recommendations for mitigations and remediation are going to be part of that story. So um, it lets us focus on that. Nice. Well, I love to hear that the KeepNet Labs platform allows you to focus on the important things. Great. So now we're going to look at a couple of screenshots from the actual KeepNet platform. So, John, you've probably seen this screen a million times. And um, yep. for those who don't know the KeepNet Labs platform, we actually have a lot of pre-built scenarios, email templates and landing pages pre-built for a variety of different topics, different methods, an array of different languages and difficulties. So, John, with a platform like this, with all these pre-built templates, how does it make your job easier? And how do you take ethical hacking from days to minutes? Yeah, so, well, so the so the pre-built templates, um, those are those are definitely something that, you know, everybody's going to be used to seeing from a lot of the uh, training platforms out there. Um, but the nice thing here with some of the pre-built templates is that we can take them and use them for things. So um, you you actually don't have any of the ones that we used on here. Um, but like, for example, uh, we used um, some of like the Starbucks templates, you know, because you guys had some templates for Starbucks gift cards or Starbucks rewards or something like that. Um, there were some other ones for like UPS tracking emails and all that. And, you, you know, like I said, anybody that's seen any of the training platforms, you've seen those templates. Um, but the nice thing, again, is that we had the flexibility to take those templates and then, um, you know, highly customize uh, what we wanted to put in those templates, whether we wanted to put our own JavaScript in them, whether we wanted to send people to, um, you know, our own landing page, um, or whether we wanted to just make it look uh, you know, significantly different than the original email um, to really test, you know, whether or not people are actually paying attention, like whatever customization we wanted to do. Um, for us, that was the big benefit of of the built in the built in campaigns. I, I think for I think for the traditional like security department and IT department use case, having all of these campaigns is is awesome because you know, you just select a bunch of them that seem like something that people get all the time and you know, you go create your campaign and that's it. You don't have to make anything. Um, but for us, the benefit was more in the ability to customize the pre-built templates. 
That's really cool. I love that you're customizing templates, obviously using what we've got and then elevating them for your specific use case. And that's exactly what we intend to do, right? We want to make it easy for you. If you want to use our templates, fantastic. If you want to modify them, fine as well. So I'm glad to hear that we're helping you there as well. So now this is kind of an example of some of our advanced reporting. And as you can see in this example, that was the fishing so activities. We can see this is my favorite that. visual. Yeah, this, <laughs> this is the this is the one that, that we like to screenshot. Yeah, because um, you can see, you know, if, if you're explaining this to an executive, it's really easy to see what happened without having them look at a spreadsheet that says, you know, we sent this so many fish that we sent this many phishing emails, you know, they were open, they were clicked like you can literally see as it filtered through your security controls, what happened. So, um, you know, you you had 470 something thousand emails of those almost 20,000 were opened 10,000 were clicked and then 4,000 uh somebody submitted data and obviously these numbers are absolutely through the roof um <laughs> so I think like you said I think you said this was like test data or something I hope um but uh but the, but I mean this is like generally representative ratio wise of what you would what you would usually see um it's a, it's a really, really, really good visual. And as you can see, this view is even customizable. So like you see the little X's up there, so you could actually get rid of, you know, one of these sections if it wasn't relevant to you, if you didn't have data submission or something like that. Uh, and you can actually click through the different simulation types. So you can see the same visual for smishing uh, or for vishing. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, this is, uh, this this kind of funnel diagram um, is hugely useful in getting the point across, um, you know, as far as what actually happened and what you achieved during your uh, your campaigns. That's great. And I know I'm definitely a visual person. So if you presented me just numbers on the spreadsheet, I'd be like, what is going on? But a visual representation like this for me anyway, this is super helpful. So I'm glad yeah. to hear that you're finding it useful as well and your clients. Yeah, no, this is this diagram is is definitely the best part of the reporting. 100% of that. And how do you find that it actually reduces time in your reporting? Um, well, because we don't have to make a picture like this. Because, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, because, right. yeah, I mean, nor, you know, nor, normally, like, we could certainly use Excel or Google Analytics or something like that to, like, take the data from the CSVs and put it together. But then we'd have to think about, well, what do we actually want to show the customer? How do we want to present it? Um, so not only does your default view pretty much show exactly what you would want to show and nothing more, but if we want to change it, you can tweak it because you can click through uh, the different simulation types and the different statuses and, um, you know, get, get rid of one of these if they're not relevant. So like, I, I, again, the customization factor is there throughout the platform in in kind of all the all the different modules exactly and i love to hear that the customization obviously helps you as well with the reporting and the automation as well and here's another um, example of some of the reporting that we can see as well so obviously with some of the fishing activities in the example they're uh, focused on different departments so john looking at this kind of data how do you use this data and how does it help with your reporting um so yeah this this data uh obviously is helpful for the traditional IT and, and security department use case because um, if you've got everybody separated in there by a department or group, um, you know, or even individual employee because you have the same view by person. Um, so you can see, you know, who the people are that are doing quote risky behaviors uh, and, and then focus more attention on those people or for, focus more attention on those areas, um, you know. And so like for our customer, we actually noticed to our surprise that it was actually the technical groups and technical departments that were the riskiest. Um, <laughs> so but but in in that case, you know, there's good there's good solutions for that. So we can implement role specific training um, to try to explain to the developers like, hey, listen, you guys have access to more sensitive stuff than most people. So you need to also consider X, Y, Z. Um, so uh, so it's 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 really helpful, you know, for assisting people with the uh, putting the right mitigations in place in the right areas um, for us, for the pen testing use case, this kind of has a second 
uh, purpose, which is this helps us figure out who to target for the next campaign. Mm -hmm. So if we're if we're doing multiple campaigns to try to break through the organization's defenses, um, you know, we can send out some broad strokes and shoot everybody a bunch of UPS tracking and Starbucks emails and all that stuff and see who's likely to, you know, click on them. Uh, and then once we figure out who the risky people are, then we can focus the next campaign on them so we don't have to keep blasting things to the whole company. Uh, and then, you know, we kind of go from there and drill down until we find the people that we, you know, that we might just want to pick up the phone and call them. Um, <laughs> so um, so this, this definitely helps us uh, get further to actual exploitation of the, uh, of the technical controls because we can figure out quickly who the risky people are. And that's the aim of the game, right? You want to find out as soon as possible who those are that are exhibiting the risky behaviors and address it as soon as possible, right? So it's great to see that the Keepnet Labs, again, the platform can help you do that. So I just want to thank everyone for joining us today. And thank you specifically to John for speaking with me today. Really appreciate everything. Thank you to everyone who is joining us today on Teams, on LinkedIn, on YouTube. Appreciate everybody joining us today. Please follow us on LinkedIn. And if you're interested in learning more about the platform and speaking to our team, please scan one of the QR codes. Again, John, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Yep, no, it's good to be here. And I hope those aren't generated by the KeepNet platform because they might have something in them. If not, <laughs> you never know. Who knows? No, these ones are good. These ones are all created by me. Anyone watching, all good. No worries. <laughs> cool. Thanks so much again, John. Have a lovely day. Yeah, you too.